Captive Quest. I am joined by Chris Penwell. Booga booga. <laughs> Chris, how you doing? I'm good. I'm, I'm doing well. So this is how a. Oh, I'm doing great. This is an exciting review uh, for me because it's uh, Crash Team Racing, uh, the remake, and uh, I, I love the original growing up, and so it's cool to see this, uh, you know, revisited. Um, it's uh, it's not they didn't differ differentiate too much from the original game. They kind of kept just enough intact, so I think it's a it's a good balance for you know new new and old fans, and uh, so it's good that we're reviewing it together because you didn't play. If, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you played this growing up, did you? Nope. Okay. Not so. Old. Yeah, I did think you did, but I didn't know maybe you played a little bit of it, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, yeah, this is really exciting for me. Uh, of course, if you remember, Chris, they uh, people were asking for it um, after the Insane Trilogy came out, and uh, there was a lot of demand for that, and of course Spyro. And then uh, last year at the Game Awards uh, is when we saw Crash walk out with a big trophy and start heckling uh, <laughs> uh, heckling uh, <laughs> Jeff Keighley. Jeff Keighley, yeah. yeah. Or he had the big box or whatever, and then he had Jeff open it, and it, like immediately everybody knew. Like, what what else would they be announcing? Well, you already knew because they uh, it was leaked, right? Oh yeah, that's right. It was leaked. I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I probably just like tried not to believe it until I knew it was true because I, yeah. I really wanted this. And uh, j just right off the bat, they started off great with the price too. I mean, forty bucks that's a that's a great price for a for a re you know a remake. That's what the Insane Trilogy was priced at too. Yeah. Um, at first, I thought maybe this should be a little bit less because it's not a couple of games. It's you know it's one. But then I thought, well, this is a really good staying power. It's got local and uh, online multiplayer. You know, so. And if you think about it, it is multiple games because they have uh, the Nitro Kart oh, uh, tracks yeah. in this game mm -hmm. too. And then they'll be adding new get new tracks through the Grand Prix uh, modes that they've included in the game that will keep uh, Crash Team Racing current. True. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I think the best way for us to start um, would be to we kind of went over our history with it already. I think the best way to start with uh, how they approach this remake is to first mention the original. The original came out in 1999, and it was from Naughty Dog, of course. It was the last Crash Bandicoot game they worked on. Um, at this point, Sony owned them, but before that, uh, Universal Studios owned them, which is where Naughty Dog got their their, their major start. They worked on uh, Way of the Warrior and a couple of odd games before. Um, Way of the Warrior, but Crash was their breakout success. I mean, they got uh, job offers at uh, Universal. Actually, um, trying to remember his name, uh, Mark Cerny at Sony. He's actually was at Universal at the time, and he's actually who helped get Naughty Dog at Universal Studios. Um, and of course, uh, for those who don't know Mark Cerny, he's really big at uh, PlayStation now. He's actually was one of like the big. Um, one of the main voices behind the PS4 being designed the way it is, like system architect. Yeah, yeah, system architect. Yeah, and I remember he reading. He was a big push for the social features, like the share button and stuff. So he's he kind of strikes me as almost like a major Nelson at Xbox, but at Sony, um, he isn't in the spotlight as much. But I mean, he's he's ve he's very good at shaping, very big on shaping how things turn out. I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, yeah. Uh, so they moved out there and they worked in the Crash games and whatnot. And then after Universal Studios, uh, PlayStation of course wanted to. Uh, acquire Naughty Dog for a lot of reasons, but on time to get into today. But the main reason was they were able to do things with the PlayStation that Sony themselves did not know how to do. Sony actually tried to create their own Crash Bandicoot style game, that kind of 3D platformer called Jalapeno Harry. And it was pretty much just uh, a <laughs> camera kind of behind the protagonist and stuff. And um, I think you, I've seen some pictures online before too, but anyway, long story short, you, it, it, it looks, it looks not great, especially next to Crash Bandicoot. And I know those are older games, but I mean, if you look at the first Crash game, it's, it was a launch title for the PS One, and it, it it looks much even if it doesn't even if you don't think it's aged super well. I think we could all agree it's aged better than most of those you know early early three D games. Like you know, I think it's easy to forget. Like you know, Crash came out before like Bubsy three D did. You know, like in Bubsy you know three D. I mean, I'm sorry to anybody who likes it, but uh, that game's trash. So, <laughs> um, you know, so I mean, I think I think that's a big thing people forget is like Naughty Dog like created one of the earliest like three D platformers like. This this they were working on this before Mario came out. Mario sixty four came out was announced. So like, even if you like Mario sixty four more, Mario sixty four did things better. That kind of thing. Like they didn't have that to go off of. So, uh, but anyway, so Sony ended up acquiring Naughty Dog, and then Sony wanted them to make a kart racing game because I'm sure you know largely in part to Mario Kart sixty four's uh, success. Um, and you know why not? We can't have enough games like that. Kart racers are fun. 
And uh, they were going to make just a kart racer game with, like, different characters. But then Sony and Naughty Dog discussed the possibility of, you know, having the Crash Bandicoot characters since Crash was pretty much like the de facto PlayStation mascot at that point. Um, it was all but official. Um, so Universal owned the rights because they, uh, you know, Naughty Dog made Crash while, you know, they were under Universal and owned by Universal. So uh, Sony reached out to Universal and they basically, Universal, like, leased the character out because they knew it would be profitable for them and not really require any effort. So, you know, why not? And, uh, you know, the rest is kind of history. Crash came out and, it, yeah, it came out a few years after Mario Kart 64. Um, but it was it was very very well received at the time and even even then and it's part of the reason there was so much um, uh, you know yelling and clamoring for a remake is because it was a it was a beloved game I'd say the only thing that it had working against it was you needed a multi tap for you know four players but I mean that wasn't the game's fault but yeah it was it was sharp it was fast and it also did a good job of differentiating itself from Mario Kart I think because um, and we'll get into this in a minute but. Uh, the boost mechanics, um, those may be in Mario Kart, but there's more of a focus on uh, precision and sharp turns and, and boosting and uh, jumping, I think, uh, in this than Mario Kart. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, the remake, it did a really good job. It, it took the original levels, it took the original characters, and it put all those in there with, you know, nice, sharp, remastered graphics, just like um, they did with Insane Trilogy. They kept the original look while also updating it. So, like, kind of like the... This should have looked like this, but we couldn't at the time because of technology, and now it looks like that. Um, it reminds me of Ocarina of Time 3D. Like, you know, that's how Nintendo did it with that game too. They wanted it to look a certain way, and you know, they just, you know, the, the, the technology's limitate or there was a limitation there. So, um, and then a nice thing they did, and Chris, this is what you pointed out, is they used a bunch of tracks from Crash Nitro Kart, which was the uh, sequel developed by Vicarious Visions. Um, it came out on PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. Uh, there was a Game Boy version, but we're not going to talk about that because it, it, was, it was trash. So <laughs> it just was. They should have put it in the Game Boy Advance. So uh, yeah, they put some they put some tracks in that. And uh, Chris, I, I want to hear your thoughts on these tracks too because um, I may you know be like very loyal to the original, but I actually uh, really enjoyed uh, the Crash Nitro Kart tracks. Yeah, back in the day, so I was very happy to see them here. They were super. They're super cool. These new tracks. Did you like uh, uh, Thunderstruck? I gotta ask because Thunderstruck's like my favorite. Uh, Thunderstruck? Yeah. Which one was that? Oh, uh, that's when we're going down those, you're going down those big hills and there's a lot of like jumps and twists and turns and there's those big rollers that you have to either, uh, go underneath them while they're, like, while they're spinning up in the air. Mm -hmm. But if they spin and hit you, then you end up spinning out of control. So you have to risk, do I sacrifice a little bit of speed momentum and go around these or do I go underneath them? Um, mm. Yeah, I like that one a lot, and I also love Electron Alley. That's honestly, that's actually probably my. I favorite. love Electron Alley. Yeah, that that's one's my so favorite. much fun, and the sense yeah. of momentum and speed you get on that is unreal. Because this might down. be heresy, but it, it might be my favorite track. Oh, from, it's one of mine too, dude. No, it's it's a good track. It's it's really yeah. good. Um, and they put a couple of characters uh, from Nitro Kart Two, which I saw some people being like, "Eh, but you know, that's, that's I don't like." Well, here's the nice thing: you don't have to play as them, and no. there's even a mode that you can select there's two modes for the adventure mode you can select classic or you can you can select nitro field mode classic mode um retains everything from the original you can't use any characters that weren't in the original game no characters that weren't in the original game will be present in the adventure mode races um you know everything is just the way it was besides the graphics and maybe some you know some quality of life tweaks but you know overall it's it's how your brain will remember it and then um nitro field mode, which is what i i mean I, that's what i played on just because you know i've already played the original before the new graphics, the only difference, for the most part, you know, I want to check out the new things it has. And, um, so yeah, I did Nitro Field Mode 2, and that, that makes it so the new characters are in there from Nitro Car, and, you know, some of the new tracks are in there, or not in the adventure mode, but, um, you can play as the, the, the newer characters, and they can be in the races. Um, and then, of course, the, uh, the tracks themselves from the, uh, the, uh, new, uh, game, you can play those online, uh, or just, like, you know, against the AI, or, you know, local multiplayer, those, those new tracks aren't in the adventure mode still. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, uh, it was really cool they included those. I mean, there was no guarantee we'd get a remake of Nitro Kart, so I think it's cool they just stuck yeah. some in. And I want to add this as well. I think the new track, uh, Twilight Fools, I believe it's called, um, the DLC that was included in the update for free, is very good. Like, it, it, it's very, it, it compares very well to the original games, and I love the creativity of the track. 
Uh, it's interesting to look at. It's very fun, and it just feels like loyal to the series, and I, I love it. So like, I, it, I haven't played it, that it track shows, yet because yeah, I was, I was it shows great busy, promise. But I watched a video on it, and it look yeah, it looks great. <laughs> I completely agree with you. It shows great promise for the future of the series if they ever make a new one. Yeah, and see, I think that they're kind of um, testing the waters a little bit because in the Crash Bandicoot Insane trilogy, there were there was one new level called Future Tense. And it yeah. was a free level um, in the Xbox and Switch version. And at first, it was free on PS4. I know later it was paid. like It was like a dollar or two, I think. But I think that they later made it free. I don't remember. But it was free for like the first month or two the game came out. But um, yeah, and that was a new level uh, they added to Crash Bandicoot 3, Warped, in the Insane Trilogy. And I played that the day you know it was available. And I loved that level. I thought it was great. If you wouldn't have told me, like if I never, if I didn't know that was a new level... Like, if, if, if you didn't tell me this level was just created, yeah. I would have thought that belonged with the other levels. Like, it felt mm -hmm. it felt right there at home with the rest of the levels in terms of, like, you know, the themes and the uh, the platforming itself. And I don't know, it just, it just felt like it belonged there. It didn't feel weird. Yeah. And uh, I, have to, I have to say, you know, it, it, I really hope Toys for Bob makes the next... Oh, wait. Sorry. Oops. Who made the... Who... No, Toys, this, Toys for uh, Bob did the. Uh, I, I, I movie, hope yeah. I hope B Nox I hope B Nox makes the next game because yeah. the, the this track is awesome, uh, and I, I just want to say overall um, I never played this as a kid I haven't played this at all like for Crash Team Racing, and I really enjoyed my time with this game it's held up extremely well, um, it differs from Mario Kart like you said Josh yeah that that the drifting system is really interesting you almost um, have I like to how drift. you have to press the button the other button like. What you have to do, you can press either L1 and R1 or R1 to drift, and then you press the other button to uh, to get like a boost yeah, from that. So, and you can do that three after. times. You, kinda, you can just kind of feel it. After, after a while, your muscle yeah. memory just takes over. But it, yeah. it feels like you have to keep the rhythm of it, and that's really cool. That's uh, a great element to um, a rather stale kart racing genre, you know? So it's nice to see kind of like that come back in a cool way. Um yeah, I love kart races myself, and for me, some one of the most important elements of a kart racer is its characters. Uh -huh. And before, in the previous episode, I said they're not that interesting. But after I finished Crash 1 very recently um, for this review, uh, I realized, yeah, it's, it's true to the series. It's that, that they become much more interesting once you played the games. Mm -hmm. um, and... Yeah, I, I really like the cast of characters that this game has now. And I like the story mode a lot, too. I don't think kart racers need a story mode, but I like how Crash did it. It was just, it kind of fit the humor. Um, yeah. For those that um, don't want spoilers, you know, don't listen for a minute. But, I mean, it's a kart racer, you probably don't mind. But, uh, essentially, Nitrous Oxide is this alien from outer space, and he wants to uh, turn Earth into a giant <laughs> parking lot. And if, if, yeah. if, if, if everybody can, you know, if, if he can be beaten... In a giant like you know tournament, then he'll he'll, he'll essentially leave, um, and if not, then he's gonna turn the earth into a parking lot. And so Crash and and, and the villains, you know Cortex and, every, and you know Dingo Dial and Tiny and everybody, they all you know agree to race against him. And um, so you uh, there's a couple of little like uh, hub areas, and the hub areas are kind of fun because you can kind of practice your driving there. And there's a couple of levels for each hub area, and um, you know, uh, they get, I think, progressively more difficult in terms of what the tracks expect out of you in terms yeah. of responding. Um, they start off very kind of simplistic, like Crash Cove's kind of like uh, just a beach, and it's pretty much just a circle, I think. You know, nothing too crazy. Um, and then they do get progressively more difficult, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's a boss for each area, and then, of course, the final boss is is the uh, is nitrous oxide. So it's not super long. I mean... No, but it's. I don't think it overstays its welcome. I think it's there for the right amount of time. But that's the, that's not the main draw of the game. It's the main draw is to play uh, with your friends or you know play these tracks like in time trial or mm -hmm. uh, other modes uh, to enjoy the game. So it, it's a nice it, it little teaches bonus, the mechanics, but that's it not lets the main. You learn the levels a little yeah. bit, and then it, it gives you a little yeah. bit of fun, and you can maybe unlock a couple things. I don't remember how much. I think you could just. I think you unlock some uh, of the Wampa coins, which you can use for. Uh, unlockables, which kind of leads into the next thing, which is the multiplayer component of this game, which is yeah. Um, w we we were delayed in our review for for two reasons. One, we got a little busy, but two, we wanted to give a little bit of time because uh, Chris and I, well, uh, we got a we'll mention this in our show notes too. We got a review copy uh, from Activision, yeah. so thank you very much, Activision and developer Thank you, Activision. 
Um, I ended up buying a, uh, buying a copy and then uh, Chris was playing on a review copy. And so Chris and I were playing together like, you know, right when it came out. But uh, we had a little bit of trouble at first, but Beanox... We haven't even played crashing. together yet. Like, the problem is is that we, we couldn't invite each other to the room. Yeah, I think we played like one That's or nice. two races, maybe? But even No, we didn't play any. One of them was from SharePlay. We had a SharePlay to play it. Oh, and it didn't really work. Yeah, and the, like you said, SharePlay can be a little laggy with multiplayer sometimes. So yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was just there was just you know it, it, we had some issues with like getting into matches and you know inviting each other and joining games and. But I, I do want to mention for anybody you know uh, you know nervous about that they've they Beanox has done a fantastic job of patching the game. They've done a couple of patches and it's 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 improved yeah. largely since um just like any multiplayer game you know does after it launches so. But here's what makes it stand out across other uh, kart races, in my opinion, is that it stays current. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like with uh, the new uh, Grand Prix that you can unlock new characters, skins uh, for your car, um, skins for your uh, characters, even. And uh, I-, I like that. It keeps it current. And yeah, um, they kind I'm of really went... looking forward to playing as Sparrow in the in the upcoming season. I am very excited about that. Yeah, I'm and, and so something excited. else to mention, everybody. Uh, uh, Knox said they were inspired by like the games of a service and battle royale uh, things happening right now yeah. with like you know the seasons and unlockables like with Fortnite and PUBG and mm. and uh, whatnot, uh, Black Ops Four. Uh, but this is all free. There's there's no you. It's not microtransactions. Yeah, you can't yeah. spend money if you even if you wanted to. Like there's no way to yeah. spend money in the game. It's all those Wampa coins that you earn from racing. Mm-hmm. Um, in uh, you you earn some playing like you know in adventure mode and offline and stuff. But like you're gonna earn a lot more if you're playing like online and verse mode. And, and there's uh, in there's in game challenges as well. Mm-hmm. So it, it tells you to do okay uh, race. As this person to w- and win the race to get the nitro points or whatever. There's and then it encourages you to do, you to play other modes too, like the battle mode. Like I didn't oh, I play forgot, that yeah, before, I until I never really been the, that big on battle mode in, in Mario Kart. No, either, so. I didn't play much of bar- battle mode of, in this game. We have to admit, um, but I will say for anyone that likes uh, ba- like likes not, battle mode from Crash or in Mario, it, it, it it's good for what it is. It, it it works fine. There's no it's there's no detriment to this game it's just not a mode that i particularly enjoyed that's just not the main draw yeah really. it's not why i'm playing it really but it, it's yeah. fine it, it works fine for what it is it's just it's it's yeah it's not my jam but um yeah the unlockables in this are great a lot it's, it's all cosmetic stuff you don't get any gameplay um you know advantages, advantages yeah. or anything yeah but there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can uh, unlock and there's a lot of skins you can unlock like my favorite is i like to play um I like to play as a uh, Crash when he looks like I don't know how to pronounce it, but the Shibi dog. You know what I'm talking about <laughs> yeah. Doge. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Remember that the, guy? Yeah, the, the white, the white. Skin, yeah, right. Yeah, I like to play as that because he just looks so cute. So I like to play. <laughs> I like that my Crash look like that. Um, so yeah, that's, and if that's... you if you have it on PlayStation, there's a retro skin that I love. I love to play as Retro Crash. That was actually half the reason I bought it in PlayStation, just because like yeah. yeah, I thought that'd be really cool to play as. And then the other reason I bought it is. Uh, I, I own an Insane Trilogy on Switch and PlayStation 4, and I'm going to buy an Xbox at some point when it goes on sale. Um, <laughs> but I, I had to buy that and this on PlayStation first because, like, that's what I grew up playing it on, you know? So right. um, I'll probably buy Crash uh, Team Racing Nitro Fueled on Switch when it goes on sale just because it'd be fun. That to, makes sense. Yeah, it'd be fun yeah. to have that, like, for, like, uh, you know, a bunch of us get together or something. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, it's, it's yeah, overall, um, we don't really do sc- – scores uh on active quest we nah. mostly just like to you know get into the game but this is definitely i i it's, it's not like a game of the year contender for me but i would say it's on my list of of you know my, my top the best games here yeah, yeah. So, um for me like I, I i really like how it's a step up uh for that typical cut racing genre so if you feel like you haven't really enjoyed a cut racer for a while like me or i haven't really enjoyed mario cut because like the very general kind of gameplay mechanics that you've gotten used to Mm -hmm. i'd play this i'd recommend it one thing i'd say though is that we had a bunch of people around um trying like and they played like mario kart and it feels different uh, a lot different and that will take some getting used to the crash skin on mario Kart. yeah like that i'm I'm just saying like the drifting feels way different it's it like you gotta move a bit more to the right or the left to drift 
yeah. and it's more mm-hmm. difficult. But you get you start to get used to it after uh, after an hour or so. So like if you feel frustrated by that, keep going. You'll mm-hmm. get used to it because you'll get used to it. Yeah, it, it feels different. I mean, even if I play mm-hmm. bu- play play Mario Kart Eight Deluxe after playing a bunch of Crash, my, I still have to kind of adjust back to that because it does yeah. feel different. Um, it, the 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 weight of the carts are different. It just it just mm-hmm. feels different, and it's not and bad for either of the games. It just feels different. That's why I recommend like Josh to. To play uh, the story mode before you really yeah, start it, playing online. Yeah, because it really and, eases you in. Yeah. Like, that, like that first track, Crash Cove. I mean, like you're on a beach. Yeah. It's kind of like that Diddy Kong track. I forgot the name of it. And it, it teaches you how to play as well through Aku Aku, giving you hints and Oh, yeah, I like, forgot about that. I, I, love, race finishes. Uh, I love Aku Aku in that game, in this game. I like yeah. it. Back in the day, it was cool, too, because it was like, whoa, like he's like full-on talking to me, like like more than, you know, in the other games. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that was cool. Um. But yeah, this is a, a really great game. It's priced really good. I mean, it's it's forty dollars for the full price. I mean, you can yeah. you can get it for less if it goes on sale or pre-owned probably. But um, forty bucks is a great value. Like, I mean, you, you you're gonna get a lot of time out of this. And like Chris pointed out, they're doing like the Grand Prix and they're doing like free content updates. They added a new free track already. Spire of the Dragons yeah. coming as a character you can unlock for, for free. Tom White. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's very exciting, and I'm, I like that they're still playing with uh, the Spyro uh, series a little bit like that because. Uh, there was a little bit of that back in the day, like you know, the demos for Spyro would be on the Crash games and stuff. And the reason for and back had... in the day is uh, Naughty Dog and Insomniac like worked like next to each other, like in the same yeah. like, building. But I, I like that. And they had that... crossover stuff too. Yeah, like Crash was in a like they had the Game Boy Advance crossovers. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about those. Yeah, they they had like Crash and Spyro in like each other's worlds, I think, or something. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. that like camaraderie from Naughty Dog and Insomniac being buddies kind of just carried into the series yeah. years after they both companies weren't even involved. So that's really yeah. great. But yeah, I, I I definitely can easily recommend this to anybody that is looking for a fun multiplayer game, uh, a good kart racer, or even just a different kart. I mean, it's good, but uh, even if you're like I've already got Mario, like I think this is still worth uh, it's checking a great out. Oh, yeah, because it's, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, and you can always Redbox it and check it out too if you want to just kind of you know check it out for a weekend with some friends and see if you're into it. Yeah, um, I'd say though, like when you're playing online, like it's it's a bit frustrating uh, when there's like a veteran player like going a- ahead of you, uh, and that like, you can't even finish the race because they're so good at the game and they yeah, know all the once shortcuts the first and person finishes, you get like thirty seconds until it just takes a, a place everybody's <laughs> in and it's, like puts that as the place and that'd be my one of my main complaints is like the matchmaking should be better to really make sure like all the veteran players would be stuck with each other and then the newcomers can play with each other as well uh so that's my that's one of my main complaints is that like yeah. i wish i could at least finish the race and hey i just <laughs> i'm just throwing this out there i mean I, I i played the hell out of this back in the day and i yeah. i would consider myself pretty good at it and that happens to me too i mean i i get yeah. first place and second place sometimes but there are plenty of times where I I am in sixth place and I'm in the middle of my second lap and somebody yeah. finished, yeah, you know. So insane. that happens to me too, and I, I agree with you. I wish they would change that because, I mean, that's not unheard of in other multiplayer games to mm-hmm, let the match mm-hmm. still, you know, like matches don't end that quick just because one person's doing really good. But what I'd say is expand the time from thirty seconds to maybe a minute. Yeah, yeah, that, like, that, that maybe would that would make it better. Too. That would be a. Um, would be a good but balance. I would say the matchmaking does need to be improved. Yeah, and the only other complaint, uh, like that, and the only other complaint I have is um, the, um, and maybe they patched it, I, I haven't played in a week or so, maybe they've patched it again, but the AI was, is, is uh, it's, it's, it's a bit much in the uh, adventure mode. Yeah. I can go back in the original, and I mean, I can just fucking, like, I can smash through that, and I can get first place left and right, and, and like, the hardest difficulty, or normal, or whatever, I don't have, I don't have that much difficulty yeah. in it. And this one, even in medium, I was just getting my ass handed to me left and right. Um, and I, I have to give Josh a hard time here because he told me to go on easy because of this. And it's way too easy. Yeah, so, the, the easy is, I, there's, it needs to be balanced. It really does. Because like, normal like, is like, yeah. a little bit harder than it should be. Right. Hard is right. freaking crazy. Like, I'm good. Nope. And then, yeah, easy <laughs> easy is easy, like way easier than it should be. Like they need to, So they need to tweak the difficulty. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't ruin the experience, but... Your, your options are way too frustrating, more frustrating than it should be because the AI just keeps getting just getting me left and right. And then, oh, this is really easy. So, yeah, they need to they need to tweak that. That's my, that's my only major complaint, really. I could live with the yeah. with the uh, online issue of uh, 
you know, they should fix the matchmaking, but I'm saying I, I could live with that. I, I'd rather they fix the uh, the AI because it's, yeah. it's pretty rough sometimes. But yeah, overall, um, I really enjoyed this game, and I'm just very happy that you enjoyed it too, Chris. Um, yeah, I, I, I did, yeah. Um, I just, I, I love the immaculate kind of detail that they've put into these tracks and the additions they've made, like adding a dragon into the cave or, yeah, you know, yeah. like stuff like that. But like, and even like adding animations to the CTR gates, like uh-huh. that, that were never there. Like things like that, like the b are insane for, I love and you it. You know what? And, like you pointed out. Or maybe, insane. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like we were talking about though, like I, I would trust them to do a crash, you know, uh, nitro card or crash team racing Two or however they want to do it. And I yeah. would trust Vicarious Visions to do, you know, uh, let's pretend that the other Crash games didn't happen. Uh, yeah. There was some good, there was some bad, but let, like, I'm just saying, let's just have the new Crash Bandicoot 4. You know, I, I would be down for that. Yeah. Just a direct yeah, I think it's going to gonna happen. Here, here's my prediction. Crash Bandicoot 5 or Crash Bandicoot 4. That's going to be a PS5 launch title. That would be exclusive. Amazing. Boom. Mic drop. Maybe, maybe launch exclusive because Activision, but yeah. La- launch exclusive, yeah. yeah. PS4. Yeah. yeah, that would be really cool. Oh, man. PS5. I would, I would buy that immediately. I mean, I actually PS5 bought a, launch time. I actually bought a PS4 the day that Insane Trilogy came out. Yeah. I wanted one for a while, but like that was like the okay, fine, I'm gonna go get one. You know, like that was what like just okay, fine. I was already probably gonna get one, but like as soon as that was coming out, I was like, okay, I'm gonna buy one that day just so I could send Sony a message like, hey, this is why I bought this. <laughs> you know, that way they would see. So somewhere, yeah. somewhere, somebody would be like, "Oh, we just saw a person buy this PlayStation the same day they bought the game," which I'm <laughs> sure nobody noticed, but that was my hope. So, but I do like to keep seeing these remakes happen. You know, like with Medieval coming later in the year, I'm hoping that we see more of these, like Ape Escape, and you know, um, maybe maybe like Siphon Filter, and you know, just there's all kinds of really cool games that I'm happy to see getting remade. Yeah. And I just want to say this really quick. I see a lot of people say like, "No, I don't want you know remakes. I just want new games." We're get we're getting both, you know. So like, I think we can all be happy that we're getting to revisit some old some old experiences while also mm-hmm. getting you know some new exciting ones. For example, there was the Resident Evil Two remake, which is a really solid remake. But we're we still got Resident Evil Seven, and they're still working on new stuff. So I think we live in a really great time where like nostalgia and new experiences are blending into new entries that are inspired by the old games, and then also yeah. just you know remakes too. So it's really it's a really exciting time. It truly is. So thank you everybody for listening. Um, go go check Crash out like right now if you're even remotely interested in anything kart racing. Um, and like I said, if you're on the fence about it, rent it, check it out. I guarantee you'll end up buying it on your platform of choice. Especially now that the online's been patched a lot and we got the seasons coming up and all kinds of fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So thank go you eat some apples. for the review code, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys at our next regular episode, episode 31. Thanks. Chump.